to come to his church and to his Sunday school and to his vacation Bible school, that we might know him and live in him. Our second lesson for today, and you listen when we read it, is really an invitation. So, remember, invitations are lots of fun to get, and Jesus invites us right here to be with him. Shall we pray? Let's share a word of prayer. Jesus, you invite us. Help us to hear. Help us to come to you and know you, for you are our God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for your help. reading is taken from Acts, the 16th chapter, verses 16 through 34. One day as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God, who proclaim you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews. They are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing, rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, 
Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved in your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Revelation 22, 12 through 14, 16, 17, 20 through 21. See, I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with the testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come, and let everyone who hears say, Come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life as a gift. The one who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of our gospel. The gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus prayed. I ask not only on behalf of Leeds, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me, and I am in them, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. pray with me. Lord, we gather today at your invitation, and we come around your word to be shaped by you. We ask that you would be with us now. Use the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to proclaim your word, that finally we might encounter you, for you are the one that we need. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the eternal Christ. Amen. I think we can categorize today's second lesson as the conclusion of the Bible. The second lesson is taken from the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, and it's the concluding verses of Revelation. It's the very last verses of Revelation. So it's the last verses of the last book. Got to be the conclusion, right? And, and I think it's a helpful way to read today's second lesson. I think if you read it as concluding the biblical message, it really has some wonderful things to say to us. So let's take a look at today's second lesson. Let me begin with some background and then get into some of the specifics of the lesson. A little bit of background. Uh, Revelation is, is, is a fascinating, powerful book. Uh, as most of you know, I, 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 I'm enthralled with the book of Revelation. Absolutely, absolutely fascinates me. It is picturesque. Uh, it is symbolic. It is powerful. It's an incredible proclamation of who Jesus is. Uh, I, I, think we, I think we misread the book of Revelation in our modern day. In our modern day, the question we usually ask of Revelation is, when is Jesus coming back? And we try to use the book as a roadmap to the future. And that's just not how John the author wrote the book. In fact, in Revelation, John tells us a number of times not to be predicting when Jesus is coming back, because we're not to know that. I think Revelation is better read as a proclamation of who Jesus Christ is, and as a call for us to follow him. Revelation is warning. 